All right, good morning. Once again, we are here at 0600. It's uh, Crossfire Trading. Trading the opening of the, or the closure of the Asian and the opening of the London and European markets. Currently on the charts, or currently on the, uh, on my screen, we have Euro Odd, Euro NZD, GBP Odd, and GBP NZD. Okay, so Euro Odd. Let's have a look at that first. That's a strange looking price action there, straight away. Right, so 15 minutes. We're going to put the indicators on. So a vertical line and a couple of trend lines. So here we've got the pivot line, okay, and price has come down, activated the pivot line, and it's come down to support one, okay, and look how it's respected that. And generally what we're kind of expecting would be for price to go between the pivot lines, okay, so it's gone through the pivot line, it's kind of activated things. S1, and then we kind of, we would normally expect price to come back to P1 and from wherever, but to, not a huge amount of volume uh, in it this morning. You can see from the oh, sorry, let me just move that again. From the open of the of the session, just from last night, uh, we had a move down. Okay, it just touched. You see how I said sometimes that uh, imbalance. I think that imbalance is still active. Yeah, that imbalance is still active, and the bottom of imbalance can sometimes act as resistance area, and that's what it did. Uh, so it went up there at uh, 23.30 and then we had this move to the downside, okay, um, 0 0.45, bit of sideways movement and then pushing down again. Um, so that's interesting. Euro NZD. So it's taken out this imbalance here, so we'll remove this and again same sort of move. So it's it's come down. It's uh, gone to the pivot line. It's activated the pivot line, but it's now going sideways. So that's interesting. Um, but this this imbalance here has been mitigated. So uh, let's go and put our couple of lines on the chart, just in readiness for six fifteen. Oh, don't want to do that. Uh, I'll change this one to red. Uh, GA on 15 minute time frame. Let's see how there's, all, there's a very similar pattern here, look, if you've noticed. Activate the pivot, and this one's still heading south. Is it going to end up down to support one? Quite possibly. So make sure it's on the 15 minute here. 6 o'clock. And I'll keep this this area of interest here. Now I'll take it off. I'll take it off. There we go. Right, G G U P N Z D. Big area here. Oh no, it's not. I thought that was no, it's not imbalanced at all. I thought it was. No. Right. Right, let's go back, have a look, see if we can put any any sort of imbalance on. There's a tiniest, there's a tiniest bit there. But we're going to put it on because it is relevant. I'm not even going to bother putting that. Sometimes, you know, it's a bit of a pain with uh, with trading view because you want to make that bigger, but yet yeah, you can't adjust it because it's not big enough on the screen. So, 
trading view it would be nice to see some uh, some changes just improving things usually when they improve things they only make it worse but uh, not trading view generally I'm not talking about that I'm just saying right sometimes when software gets updated it's not quite as good right Euro NZD what have we got in there yeah, should we be taking them off? Should we? That's better. That's better. Right, there we go. There's a little bit of imbalance here. Just down to there. Template imbalance, okay. See that one there? See the crosshair? See how it went to the, the bottom of this wick and the top of that wick? It's just about mitigated itself out, so there isn't any there. And a little bit just to the south. Just about no, no, that's been mitigated by that, so there's no imbalance there. <coughs> what we've got here. There's a bit there, look, a bit of a lump. That's the official term, a lump of imbalance. Right, um, if um, if you want some, if this is the first time you visit the channel, um, obviously hit the subscribe button. Kind of appreciate that because it keeps the algorithm going and it lets people see what we do or what I do no, what, no I'll say we it is the we because we are a team um, because without the team I would be a a gibbering wreck trying to trying to work out how to work out how to how to configure MT4 so they, you know that's, uh... but anyway if you're not yet subscribed, subscribe. If you're not like, you haven't liked the video, give us a like. And also, if you look at the cards just up there, you'll see my mini course, how to do this strategy, um, with a few hit, hints and tips. And um, you can ask questions as well. Um, so it's, it's always good to to be able to ask questions and um, just learn more about it. And I'll admit, you'll not learn everything you need to know from a few videos. It gives you an insight, and then you can join us can join our trading community and that is the only way but pretty much the only reason why I trade today or can trade because of the community and because we do live sessions and because you can jump on and ask questions and you know trading is something that some people find straightforward we, we call ourselves straightforward Forex because it is just straightforward some people struggle and uh, I've got to admit, I struggled because I'm rubbish at maths. Numbers, numbers confuse me, um, or at least they they used to. Yeah. And particularly if you're not kind of that way inclined, if you're not logical like me, more a creative type, um, you don't really practice numbers. And sometimes it's just the practice of numbers that uh, that can hone your skills. Um, just looking at imbalance down here. This is quite wicky look. A little bit of imbalance there, look, between those two wicks. Let's put that on. And again, as I always say, you'll see you'll see areas of imbalance the more you do this. And yes, 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 we can get an indicator and yes, you know, we can highlight the the wicks a certain colour to identify it but you know when you're first learning do as much manual as you can do as many manual processes as you can right let's go and have a look at my forex book go and have a look at the news see what's on the horizon for today oh 
Okay, 7 a.m. We've got uh, GBP news. It's low impact. Excuse me. Um, we've got Euro news at. Oh, well, see, it really is 6 a.m. You can't fake this face. Uh, 9.30, 10.30 Euro news. Uh, 13.30, obviously, that's going to encroach onto our 13.30 or 1 p.m. session, doing this at 1 p.m. But for now, it looks like we've only got a small amount of news of low impact, so that's not too bad. Uh, let's go and have a look at um, the Forex factory just to see what they are reporting. Uh, so here, well I want the right time look, 6.13 and they're not even reporting anything. 12, 12.30 a.m. 3.09.5, okay see so yeah, I've missed it look, 7 a.m. 7 a.m. low impact on the pound and then 1.30 p.m. is CAD so you can tell why I use um, my FX book pretty much all the time um, but it's always good it's just a, a matter of um, common sense really just to check them both but I've never really found discrepancies with with my FX book so it's always very good okay so we're going to wait till 6.15 and uh, right, 30 odd seconds, we'll just wait until uh, the clock goes. And we'll put these trend lines on. Oh, in position. So we'll put one, we'll start with it now because it's not going to move too much. Right, so top of the, where's the higher high of this wick? Let's take off that, that's better. The higher high is this red candle here. If you're not sure what I'm doing, then uh, that course that I mentioned explains this in a bit more detail. But again, it's really simple. It's just like, can you put a straight line on between two points? Yes, okay, good, you're halfway there. And we've got that there. You can see straight away this area of resistance on this pivot. So two minutes. And we'll put the indicator back on. All right, there we go. So it's bigger so we can see it. There we go. So the high high of that one is again it's almost it's almost the same as uh, the last one. Almost the same as NZD. We'll put the magnet tool on, and we'll go. Is that, is that the higher high? That was egg. Just for clarification, it's not actually a higher high. We're just it's a higher candle in relation to our six o'clock candle. See that one? Look, it looks like. Is it just? Is it? Ooh, I, think, I think this green candle just pipped it. It's just a little bit lower. There we go. There you go. Okay. GBP odd. So there's our candle. Where's our high? Is there look just and our low is the one next to it bring it down I suppose there we are right two minute time frame all pairs currently are in the middle of nowhere so it could be a it could be a slow start this morning. So the high high I'm gonna put or the high. 
anyway, anyway. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, and then the low. What well, next to it? There we go. Two minute time frame. Indicators back on. And there we go. Right, let's go and see what we've got. So the euro odd, okay, it's um, currently in between the two trend lines, which is called no man's land, it's nowhere. Uh, we're currently in a wave up. Um, the histogram is showing us that it's kind of weighted towards a buy, but there's not much volume. And we don't get into trades when it's in this particular area, okay. If price goes up above there, then we've got the the 200 moving average, which is going to be the first hurdle, if you like. Um, but having gone to having gone to here, look, support one. Generally, price, I would imagine, is going to operate in this zone here. Okay. So if we get to the if we get to the 200 moving average, then we've got see these these highs here. Okay, that would be a, a kind of an area of consideration okay so that's an area of interest just just right there um, but generally if it got past the 200 moving average we've got 12 pips to the top of that to, to the top of that pivot and that pivot as you can see look it's a bit of an attractor before bouncing off and that would that would act as um, resistance for the price going up but again we're still going to wait just wait, be patient long enough and just see what happens and we just react. We react accordingly. We don't try and get into trades thinking it's going to go and second guessing ourselves. We'll just wait. Okay, so you see that's, that's starting to happen. Like what I just mentioned. So it's gone above the trend line. Okay, it'll probably end up going to the, the 200 moving average or the possibility that he wants to go to the 200 moving average. 6.3 pips. What's it? Once it gets there, uh, then have we got the pivot above? No, we have imbalance above. No, look at that. The bottom of the imbalance. And that imbalance, that imbalance is gone. Okay, so we should really take that out. No, that's not gone at all. We go and check it on the 15 minute. Good, the imbalance is, is still fine. So from from here, if it moves up above there, we've got a nice juicy 32 pips to there. Okay, so we'll see what happens. This is looking uh, it's looking better than what we've been dealing with over the last few few weeks, because quite literally the the trades haven't been very good at all. I mean we've we've made pips but we've not been having many great trades because of the Christmas New Year and Martin Luther King Day make has an effect. So look at this, we've got all this congestion here, okay? Then we want price to go above there, okay? Around there again we've got twenty two pips to there. Um and we would say you know would easily get a one to two anyway, based on on that. It's a look a lot better. We'll talk about clear air, okay? And from the from the top of the, or just breaking free at least from this area, particularly the two hundred moving average, okay. Even if we looked at just the, above the two hundred moving average to around these where these highs are, okay, around here, um, you have still got like seventeen pips um, of clear air. You've got a little bit of a a resistance point here okay but we'll just have to see what see what happens okay but currently we're in no man's land so we're still waiting for that in fact if there's my indicators back on no better put the indicators on 
So the straightforward forked indicator is custom made for uh, the straightforward forex team, which is what um, I'm part of. Uh, and we get this for, well, we get this as part of a team, okay? And it is custom made from somebody in the team who's way more talented than I am at coding things and a trader as well. So it's constantly updated and revived and not revived, just updated and improved over time. So overall, the big picture with this is possibly we're looking at some nice buys potentially, but we'll have to see. I'll have to wait and see. Euro odd, okay, middle of nowhere. Euro NZD is currently in the middle of nowhere. GBP odd, middle of nowhere, and so is. They're all just waiting. Nothing really happening right now, but we've just got to be patient. This one looks like it may well be going down for a potential sell. You see how it's currently at a previous area of interest that we put on from yesterday. Well, this is not from yesterday, this is from many, many days ago. Let's have a look at the alley. So this area of interest was put on October. Yeah. In October. And yet, look how price is respecting it. I'll show you when I can uh, get zoomed in properly. Down to there, up to there. Touched it perfectly down to there. So you can see how these areas of interest will always be relevant. It's a bit like if you use um, pitchforks, harmonic scans and pitchforks. Again, I, I, I like that strategy as well. Um, but you put a pitchfork on your on your chart and that those lines will always be relevant for price. So if you want to know what's going to happen in the future, scroll back left, have a look, make some analysis and you can kind of snap to plot and see a pattern. Right, I'll just keep a just keep an eye. But right now, just waiting. I think maybe at times like this I should play some music. Maybe get the drinks trolley out. <laughs> Start serving some fruit in a bowl. Nah, yeah, maybe not a fruit. Six twenty five AM. This 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 typically <clears throat> this time okay if you can trade at this time typically it is the best time to trade uh, the open of the London and European markets it's not open yet but it's the closure of the Asian open the Euro European session London session because to you know the agreements that were made many years ago centuries ago was that London the city of London is a, is a separate jurisdiction to anything else and the city of London is the, the financial capital of the world. Despite the fact that London now is rife with people shooting each other. Okay, but the city of London is a completely different jurisdiction um, to to anything else in that locality. So it's got its own police force and its own set of um, legislation as well. So it's a little bit like uh, the Vatican City. Okay, so... That is the, the, the financial centre of the world, and uh, we're trading the opening of that of that session, and it's powerful. Um, it's more powerful than the the one p.m. Okay, so uh, it's always good, even even though sometimes for me it's like getting up really early, and when that alarm goes off, I just think, oh no, it's going off. But this is what we do. The traders, we make our money this way. So you just do it. And let's face it, we ain't, we ain't down a bloody coal mine, are we? And we're not having to spend, you know, hours and hours down a coal mine. 
I've got to get me self out of bed, get a coffee, shuffle through to the office, and uh, have a look at some charts and press some keys on a button. Press some press a press a mouse or the keyboard. That's it, and just wait. Uh, again, my uh, indicators aren't on. There we go. Yeah, it's not a bad life. But the thing is, with you know people, we get used to things, don't we? And sometimes we become complacent as a result. Let's make it a bit bigger so we can just. There we go. So this area here, when you're between the two trend lines, we just call it no man's land because not, you've got too much support and resistance in either direction so it's neither going to do anything really until it breaks out and you know looking at this it'd be nice to see it break out of this but what you've got you've got the trend line so you've got you've got a potential well you haven't got a potential anything you've got a resistance area here you've got a resistance area at the pivot which kind of coincides with the 200 moving average so you've got a lot of hurdles to get over okay until it what what would be nice is to see it break out and then get some free air and then we'll, we'll be in for that oh it could come down to the downside through the moving averages okay so we always like to see the moving averages in order and also the moving averages moving in the direction okay this is a this is a buy this is a sell okay not gang to talk and what we've got right now <clears throat> is we've got the the moving averages are not in order. Okay, two hundred, the five, thirteen, the sixty-two. Okay, and again, it's all just additional confirmations. Additional confirmations and based on your back testing. See, the more back testing you do. The more savvy you build, the more um, the more of a the more of a shield or knowledge you build. Let's call it knowledge, because the more knowledge you get in this game, the more profitable you'll be. All right. See how this is going to go up to the PSA that that red dot there. Okay. If it goes up and touches that PSA, then it flips like it's just done. It's gone green. Okay. So now the price has found resistance at this trend line. So, do we have enough volume and enough interested parties to push it past? Well, it looks like we have. Okay, so now we're on uh, six thirty. It's gone past the trend line, and it's now going to find resistance at the pivot line, just like that. So it bounces off. It's resistant. It's resisting that area. Okay. So now what we're looking for is is price going to go up? past the pivot line and again that's quite a heavy area of resistance because not only have you got the pivot but you've also got the blue 200 moving average so price has got to be pretty pretty strong to get over it okay just like a big just like somebody running the what do they call it the, on the olympics when they're running around the hurdles and they've got water and stuff decathlon is it it's not just a hurdle it's a bit it's a big hurdle okay with water and I could go on, couldn't I? <laughs> I could go on with this analogy, but you've got the point. Okay, so now it's it's gone through. See, it hasn't gone through anywhere. It's it's still resisted in there. I would say it's, it'd be nice to see it go through that that pivot and go through the 200 moving average. But in order for this to clear it, okay, it's got to it's got to clear it. It's got to form a gap around here. Okay, and then it, then that gap is separation. If it then breaks away from it and the, it maintains the gap, then we've we've passed the area of resistance and that area becomes support. Um, if you find that it does this for some for some time, it could even come up up to there. Okay, but if it's still touching this area, it's still in resistance. Okay.
There we go, look, see it's gone above the the green trend line, okay? And it's found resistance at the 200 moving average. So this is tasty because what we've got now, we've got clear air potentially for a nice for a nice buy, okay, up to this up to the area of imbalance. But look what's happening with price. It tried to come past, okay, and now the sellers are taking it down. But again, what's going to happen? It's going to find resistance at the green trend line, okay. So price has got a, it's got a, any line that we've got, whether it's a trend, a trend line, or a moving average, or any of the lines that we put on, any of those lines that are significant, okay, and they all they all should be significant and relevant. Price will either bounce or break, or go sideways. Okay, and we just need to add up our stacks of probability. What is the probability of price going up? What is the probability of price going down? And what do we do? Okay, and right now we're just waiting. Just waiting to see what's going to happen. If price continues to the downside, it's got a breakthrough here and then carry on down. Uh, currently, with our indicator, what are we in? We're in a, a wave up. PSAR is green. The histogram is telling us no because there's not enough volume in there. It's in the dead zone. Obviously, you can tell because look, it's, just, it's the wrong color. Um, so again, we're just going to wait. Just going to wait. GN, what's good? Uh, oh, on GN. Okay, <laughs> Euro odd. Euro odd. Back into no man's lands. Tried to push out. Okay, but the green trend line is resistance. It's a barrier and price hasn't got enough volume to push past it and by the same token it needs to go up to 200 moving average and push past that as well if it does that you know then we've got that clear air which is kind of what I'm anticipating and wanting because that would be a nice trade right Euro NZD no man's land GUPUSD no man's land <laughs> and no man's land. But we could be looking at a, we could be looking at a sell here. So it's gotta come down to that PSA. Okay, as soon as it hits the PSA, PSA will flip. Um, then we want what we're we on now, we're on the we're eighteen seconds away. Okay, and then if price continues to do what it wants to do then we're going to end up with a new candle, okay, with a gap, okay, then it'll, then we've got this area of interest. You see how it's respected that, it's respected it there, respected it here, it's respected it there, respected it here, respected it here. So this is a significant, they're all significant, okay, but when you get your, because they're manual areas of interest, um, it's subject to your skill and put it in the, in the right place. All you got to do is, He's look at the areas of interest and go, where did price go to? Okay, it wicked it there, it wicked it, it wicked it here. Okay, so so put it on the wicks and you you go back and it starts to tell a story. It just confirms, you know, what's happened. So but what I mean by that is that if if this started looked at, see how it's how it's resisting on that area there, but it's still in resistance because it's touching it. But if price came down, and we go, right, here we go, we've got clear air, off you go. And we didn't put this area of interest on, this pivot, it's a manual pivot. We wouldn't know, we'd look at that, we'd see that price came, why is price coming down to there, what's going on? Why is price coming down to there, what, what's happening? Okay. So if this price came down, chances are it's going to hit this pivot, and it's either going to bounce or break. It's going to do two things. If it breaks through, then we go, okay, okay. Where's the next area of interest? Okay, here look. And then we're going to say, what is price doing? What are the indicators telling me? And where could price possibly go? Okay, and we're making a, we're making constant assessments based on what we're seeing and based on what we know, based on what the market has already told us. What's the market done previously? That's what's going to happen in the future. You know, we look at we look at the the candles, okay. And you know, when <laughs> when I first started trading, they'd say, okay, what what does that tell you? Well, it went down, 
then it went up and it went down and you just make no sense of the candles but as soon as you start to kind of interpret it almost like a, a second language um, you start to see what's happening and, and you, you interpret stuff anyway let's have a let's have a see what's gonna I'm warm do I So see this is coming down what it's going to do it's going to come down it's going to touch there and it'll bounce around there we go look you could write this see now it's pushed through okay which is kind of interesting so if we were to take a shot on this and put it where price is right now and we go go to about the top of that okay so look at the numbers 7.1 we're not going to get in yet okay because we've still got a minute left and this could bounce off there it's still offering uh, resistance but I like the numbers seven I like the sevens okay we're above the trend line okay don't, don't get me wrong it's not because I like the number seven it's because <laughs> it's because you know 14 14.2 14 pips is going to give us a two to one to two ratio so at two one to two it just brings us just a little bit south of that number there okay which ideally I'd have liked to have been just above here okay so again you can monitor it So five seconds left. And again, it is quite early as well, so it's uh, six forty, six forty in the morning, um, and we've still got the. We're still waiting for London and European obviously to open. But again it's looking it's looking positive. It's quite positive price action in terms of the sell. So let me just um let that do its thing and we'll come back and have a quick look. Okay, so no man's land for Euro odd, Euro N Z D starting to go for the again for a potential sell. And where are we on terms of okay? So we do have imbalance down to the south. So currently on the wadar, so let's let's see what we've got. We're in a wave down. We've got the PSAR flip. What is the moving averages telling us? One, two, three, four. They're in order. Okay, they're all pointing down. We we haven't really got a huge amount of volume. Uh, the explosion line is currently dating the exp the uh, dead zone so it's not particularly positive and sometimes you know, this water attack keeps us out of trades it's uh, it's what we sometimes call the sanity check which to be fair is quite comes in useful at regular times during the day let's see I'm just just starting to go up it's just touching there we go it's hit that that red trend line so again we're still in resistance it's still resisting that area okay and obviously the pivot you can see there so it's not ready yet and it's back into the middle of nowhere GBP odd still finding resistance at this area here pivot and also the 200 moving average and then we've got our GBP NZD which isn't ready wasn't ready um, and it's coming back to that trend line. Now the trend line it's going to resist at that trend line and it may well bounce off it but currently uh, and like I said look at that we've got very little volume but inside the dead zone and the explosion line was coming back to there okay so that would have kept us out
when's that news to kicking in? Seven o'clock on the GBP. I'll go and put that on. I know it's, a, it's only low impact, but I always like to put a line on there. I've got a little template and that says news. Very volatile. See that kind of went for what two, three pips. Okay. So what does that mean? Okay, it means somebody somewhere has just flung thirty million uh, into that into the markets. Okay. FYI, wasn't me. Right, I'll just let that do its thing, see what's going to happen. Euro odd. Sorry for sitting back, but I've been at the gym and my back's really stiff. And my arms and my shoulders. <laughs> right, so currently uh, we've come down to the the red trend line. Okay, It's found resistance because that's what it does. It's resisted at this line. Okay, It's also going to find resistance at the pivot. And if it goes any further south, then we've got to go, where is our next area of interest? Okay, well, we can see here, look, if we just put the crosshairs on, we can see there's an area of significance here, okay? And if we go further back, okay, we've got this lower low here, and we can start to see what's happened, okay? Down to there. If that price continues down, we'll uh, we'll make an assessment. In fact, I do what we'll do. Let's go on the fifteen minute. So there's a there's all these lows that I was been talking about. Obviously, at support one. Then we've got this area here. Look. Take the bodies. See that? See that? See that? <laughs> it's wicked it perfectly. I don't know if you can see that. If you can see it, if you can't see it, get a bit closer to the screen. But look, as soon as you put it on, wicked down to there, wicked down to there, wicked down to there. It's an area of interest. It's significant. Okay. And what that can tell us. That can tell us potentially what may well happen to this price. So let's go to the two minutes. So again, we're just going to wait. We're still resisting the, the red trend line. But even if we break away from the trend line, the next resistance area is the pivot okay and depending on price action you've got to wait you've got to be patient in this game okay and never never jump in thinking you know life's going to be great because you know because life always goes well for you this is where it, trading catches people out so look we're going to wave down the PSR flip uh, where's our moving averages? Where are they? So, uh, 200, we've got the, in fact, on the bottom, 5, 13, 62, 200. Okay, so the moving average in the right order. Uh, the water, the, the explosion line is starting just to move away from the explosion line, um, but the, the water is shown as a, a lack of strength. Okay, but you can see that because look, the candle's green. 
don't, don't necessarily need that but they, again this is an additional confirmation this is a really really good tool I do like the, the Wad Arata and it um, it just it does kind of solidify a lot of things um, because it's like three indicators in one You can see now, look how price broke through. Okay, it was resistance. It broke through, and now it's come back, and now that pivot is support for the move to the downside. Okay, so now we've got to look at it and think, okay, is there enough legs in this to go to the south? Bearing in mind these are our areas of interest. You see how the volumes kind of kind of gone out in it. Still not particularly positive. The what? Look at this. Look at, I mean, look at the what are. Okay. No, it's kind of flatlined. Look at that explode. The explosion line. Look, flat, flat all the way across. Flat, and it's just starting to move across. Just starting to move. Okay. But it's not particularly significant. So we've got ten minutes for the news, but the news is low impact, uh, and this is euro as well. So. And again, because that is touching, okay, I'm still going to consider that as to be resistance, even though I did say it was support, but it's still touching that line, so now it's broken away. So if we were to get into this for a short, let's see what the what do the numbers say. So above the line, okay, and you can see this engulfing candle at the top of there. We could use that as a stop loss, okay, so just above the engulfing candle. And if we came down, could we get a one to two out of this? Okay, so let's have a look. Where did price come down to there previously? Okay, here. Okay, and that is at the bottom, the very bottom of this price action here. So could we get a one to two? Uh, possibly. But right now, it's it's offering it's still in resistance look going back to that that pivot line because it's still touching it so it's not giving us it's not giving us the great trade signal it's given us the I don't really know okay anyone used to watch Coronation Street back in the day okay a lady on there called Mavis Old, old, wonderful characters of that uh, that when it was a proper soap opera. Okay, there we go. Look, so we missed that talking. Missed that. Look at it. <laughs> this is what happens when you trade at six a.m. But that that the top of that imbalance there would have been a nice potential take profit and I've kind of missed it talking but there's a trend line um, and it came took that off. came below it okay so had we have got in around around here okay then for that we could have been looking at 14 pips and then we could make an assessment based on our stop loss because obviously the stop loss is the most important thing Excuse me. Right, let me just scale through the rest of them. Okay, so that's going back into no man's land. GP into D. Great as well. Oh no, I was in this one. So yeah, we would have we would have been okay on this. And look look at the significance of that pivot line. There, look, it's touched it perfectly. It's lovely. It's a thing of beauty. <laughs> And you cons when you compare the price action today, okay, bearing in mind it's the 23rd of January, we've gone through all that, the markets warming up after the Christmas and New Year and Martin Luther, and 6 a.m. is the best time to trade for this particular strategy, and this is just proving it. This, is, this was a nice trade. Um, 
1 to 2, 14 pips. Again, that magic 7, seven pips of uh, stop loss. What you'll find now is a pivot is going to form um, resistance. And if we look at, if we go into the 15 minute time frame, oh, there's, there's imbalance there. Okay. There's now that is uh, that is it? That is interesting. This little this little move here. There's not much imbalance. Okay. There's a little bit. Okay. But this is the pivot line. Okay. Now the next thing I'm looking at. is would we see price come down to this area here I and mean, obviously we've got a 200 moving average to contend with but that's that's quite interesting right I need to flick through this a bit more because I'm <coughs> I still think this is going to come down, but we've got uh, we've got a little bit of resistance, obviously here, um, and it's going to it's going to pull down further. But look at the water. What's the water? What's the water at, uh, telling us? Okay, would you be getting to a trade if it was like this? An average-looking histogram? No, you'd stay out of it. Okay, until such time you start to get some more positive price action. And also the the explosion, uh, yeah, the explosion line moving away from a dead zone, in a slightly more positive fashion. Okay, this isn't doing that right now. And price action is is showing us that because it's sort of gone down, it and it's kind of rotating sideways. Euro NZD, yeah, that may well go down to the to the imbalance there. And again, that would have been a, a nice trade to get into if we weren't gassing so much. Okay, GP AUD, uh, mm, that's doing the same sort of thing as uh, GP NZD. It's doing the same as this lot. Start, no, not that one. Euro odd, very similar. But again, we're, we've come down, it's broken away from the trend line. <coughs> um, we've got the gap. Always good to have a gap. But then we've got these areas, these lows here, which again they're they're kind of areas of interest, and you'll find let's put them on look. So it's a two minute time frame. So all we do is put the put the crosshairs on, okay? You put it on the bottom, okay, that's ridiculous because that's optimistic. It's there's too much optimism bias. Yes, pr price went down there previously, so that's what it's gonna go to. Okay, now. So we take it up, okay, okay, we've got two taps, okay, we've got this this candle here. And that candle there, okay. And we take it a bit further. Then we go, hang on it. We've now got a bit more interest on that because we've got all these different taps. And look how price is respecting it. That's interesting, okay. And then what about there? Okay, I would, I would take it. I would take it there because that is more of a. If I take it a little bit higher, just there, okay. Now you've now all these start to correlate to each other and they start to tell the story. And then you can see, okay, price is probably going to come down and touch that line, okay, before bouncing off. If it breaks out, it breaks out of that area, okay. Then what's the story then? Are we going to go down to the downside? Quite possibly, but not yet. There we go, that's better, we can see it. See, so we've got price going through the pivot line, okay. If it breaks through, if it breaks through, what's up there, here we go. 
So do we? Oh, what do we have on here? That's one of the 15 minutes, right? That's why I can't see. Right, so yeah, if it breaks through the pivot line, which it has done, could we be seeing a significant price drop down? And I would suggest you probably could. Now, if I wasn't gassing so much, what I would have done here. Is I would have used that as take profit one because obviously that's our two percent. Then moved the stop loss to break even, and then continued this trade and plotted a take profit two and a take profit three and so on. Okay, but each time you do that, you change your stop loss, and that's why using something like a trade manager uh, can be can be important because it can do that for you automatically. Uh, and we've got a trade manager that we use. Okay, um, there are many available, and uh, what we have had has been developed for us. Um, and you can do that, and essentially, you can keep coming down, okay, until such time the price then reverses, and it will take you out. But it will take it will take additional profits on the way down or on the way up, and that's when you can become. Uh, Savvy. I miss this word. Use the word savvy. What we're doing right now is just purely manual trading because the best way to trade is manual trading. Okay. And then when you get up to speed with manual trading and you understand the processes and you understand the whole the whole way it works, then we can start to use you know like trade managers because what I found personally when I was learning to trade was there's a lot of information to process. You know, it's like flying, you know, Apollo 13. Okay, you've got a, you're in midair, you've got to suddenly make a, an assessment and you've got to crunch some numbers and you've got to say, okay, let's just keep it simple. Let's keep it simple. We know what we're doing. We're making profits, doing 2%. Well done. Okay. Now, sometimes, as, as you may find with this, okay, it may come back to retrace up to this pivot line and continue to the downside as it's what it's just starting to do. In which case, you look at that, if it goes all the way down to there, you think, ah, oh, but he missed out on all that pimps, all those pips. And that's why a trade manager can be really significant for you, uh, because it will follow that trade all the way down until such time it comes back. Uh, and that, it, let's say it retraced like five pips, and you say, okay, when it reaches five pips in the wrong direction, take me out of the trade. Okay, so it can take you out of the trade, but instead of like a 2%, you can do a 4%, a 5%, 6%. Crikey, if you went all the way down, you just keep going. Okay, and if you're on a, like a $50,000 funded account or a $200,000 account, that can be significant. And also your account is being protected at the same time, which for, first and foremost is fundamental. It's the first thing you want to be thinking of. <clears throat> so you imagine, based on, uh, I've got a $50,000 funded account, Okay, and a two percent of that is a thousand dollars. Okay, now I get to keep eighty percent of that. Okay, so I get to keep eight hundred dollars uh, when this goes two percent. Okay, now you imagine your. I mean, fifty thousand dollars is fine. Okay, making a thousand dollars on a trade is fine. Okay, it's not life changing money, but okay, it, it is life changing money if you're in a. You know, if you want to change your circumstances. And it's so straightforward. We, we call ourselves straightforward Forex. That's what our team's called. Um, because it is straightforward. Um, but you imagine doing that on a on a $200,000 account. And the only thing stopping most people from actually getting a funded account is the worry of trading with those numbers. Okay, so 1% of 200,000, uh, sorry, 2% 2 of 200,000 is four grand. Okay, so this move, on a two hundred thousand dollar account is four thousand dollars, and you get to keep eighty percent of that. So it's three thousand two hundred. 
and there are people I know trading with three million. So you put that into perspective, okay? So you build up very slowly, very gradually, and it's you know it's it's just much like it's the same sort of thing with anything in business. You you do something, you get some success, you begin to scale things up gradually. Okay, it's just like when I first started. Um, I mean, I, I I do affiliate marketing as well, um, but most people can relate more to property. So you you know let me scout through these because I'm, I'm chatting again. So you, so this one, still, still in drawdown, but this wasn't really a great trade to get in with because of the water. The water would have kept us out. When you start doing things like property, you you'll buy your first property at like twenty thousand dollars. My first property was was seventeen thousand pounds. Okay, which was was a good price back then, um, twenty five years ago. Then my second property was eleven thousand. Uh, and it was like, yeah, this is great. It's manageable. Um, it's it's not too not too expensive. Like eleven grand to buy a buy a massive house. Okay, it was a big terraced house. It was a great buy. And like I always say, you buy you 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 make your profits when you get into a trade. Okay, when you buy a house, you buy it at the right price. That's when you lock in your profits, not when you sell it. Um, same with this. And then suddenly, I invest. I started investing over in Florida and I wasn't investing 20 grand I was investing like 300 grand and it was like Whew, wait a minute. these numbers are quite big but you build up gradually and you get used to it okay and I, I remember you know just dealing with bigger numbers in having like a $30,000 overdraft at the bank can you do me a, an overdraft how much you want uh, 30 grand yeah that's okay we'll sort that for you thanks very much you know, and you get used to those numbers. So when you first start trading and you get your funded account, start with something like a 10 grand and pass it. And that's the major thing is when you do a funded account, you do a, you'll do a, there are so many different uh, people out there. Let me scour these nuggets again. Okay, so it looks like we've kind of stalled at the moment. The news has kicked in Price is kind of going sideways, although he says that this is starting to go. But you start with a, you'll start with something like a ten thousand dollar funded account, um, and it's manageable and it's within your financial thermostat, as we say. Okay, then you'll go. Okay, I'm used to these numbers. I'm, I, it's okay. I'm going to go for a fifty thousand dollar account. So you get a fifty thousand dollar account, and you go, you you do the numbers as as, as I've just explained, and then you go to a two hundred thousand dollar account, and so on, and you scale up that way, okay. And before you know it, you're trading with like five five hundred thousand, okay. And your mates down the pub will say, "How much are you trading with now?" And you go about half a million, and they go, "Oh my god, you must be making loads of money," okay. Because if you're not used to those numbers, it's scary. But when you get used to them. You just get used to them. It's just just additional zeros, okay. Uh, but you've got to do that because sometimes dealing with the big numbers right from the you know if you if you if you're good at trading then great, but if you go straight into dealing with a two hundred thousand dollar account uh, and you put a trade on and suddenly it goes you know several hundred pounds into drawdown or dollars into in, in, into drawdown it can affect you. So you've got to you've got to build up that financial metal in your head you know financial uh, what would we call it robustness or you know what I'm trying to say right Euro NZD it's pretty much done its thing histogram was showing us some nice strength and now it's kind of it's gone okay top of the imbalance there Yeah, I thought that might have wanted to go down. But again, if we were using the trade manager for this, we'd still be in profits because it would have locked those profits in. Okay. So we've got 14, what have we got? Uh, yeah, 14, 14.1 14 pips. Let's call it 14. 14 pips of profit. We could have, we could have locked those in and we could still be in the trade 
okay but like the price now is going sideways so as a scalper as a scalper we like to be in and out of trades so we'll probably be just out this one and, and done see we've got the piece our flip uh, whereabouts are we in terms of the indicator we're still in a wave down the wave is still green but the piece is flipping so you know early indications are saying that so uh, this is uh, on the turn and then that's not a double entendre by the way you're odd you're odd going for the buy okay this is kind of what I was looking at initially so look at the look at the histogram histogram showing us the strength the explosion line is, is shown as the same um, we are approaching the 200 moving average so it needs to uh, needs to get to that area there okay break free before we end up see we've got this got this area here so let's put that on I'll put that on a little bit lower. There we go. So this is an area here of interest. And essentially what I would like is price to go above here and then go to the top, but like it's, it's, it's retracing right now. So I've got 15 pips to the pivot. So, oh crikey how long have I been gassing this morning an hour and I've just realised I've been on an hour and seven minutes that's crazy that's, that's flown right let's have, let's have an assessment there's me talking about everything ok a lot of congestion look at all the congestion there loads of congestion ok ok so let's uh, let's come out of that Right, let's go have a look through. Okay, so we could be looking at a potential nice buy on this. Okay, if uh, if price goes past this 200 moving average and our area of interest, which is the previous highs, if it does that, okay, let's just uh, let's chuck a. So to the bottom, see see to that that engulfing candle there. 9.4 pips so we need 18 pips out of that so we've only got 14 pips in the move so we just take it a little bit less we still need 16 pips out of that so up to a 1 to 2 a 1 to 2 is just shy just shy of the pivot but look what's happening we've got our, 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 our area of interest okay is now a resistance area so like I said, we need to be above above this area because it could quite well just uh, retrace at the area there. This is what I started to do. So the WADR, the WADR is showing slightly more positive moves. See, that was... The explosion line pretty much flatlined, and now it's just still starting to tail up. But the the histogram colours changed, and like I said, we've got this area of interest, and it's bounced off it. So we want clear air up to there, okay, for a potential move to the pivot, which we we don't have at the minute, but it may well change. Again, we've got to be patient. Moving averages, where are they? They're all pointing up. We've got, uh, they're not quite in the right order. 62's down here, 13, five, and then the 200, so. There's still a bit more crossing over needs to happen. Right, let's have a quick flick through. Euro NZD, let's just wait, wait for that to do its thing. 
GBP odd could well be doing the same same or similar thing as as euro odd okay um, but again resistance at the trend line resistance at the 200 moving average resistance at the pivot uh, and then could we maybe see maybe see a run sort of halfway see we've got these these excuse me sorry about that. we've got these highs here and we've got these highs here as well so could we maybe see a run all the way up to the imbalance some of that imbalance was taken out but it's still active so what do we do go and put an indicator on okay can we put an indicator on the uh, on the pivot mm, no so put like a parallel channel on or put a line on a chart or do something where you can just put an indicator on okay yeah so we can do it on the horizontal ray so we could put a, ho a horizontal ray on here okay so that we'd want price to come above the pivot and start going north from there so we just put the horizontal array on and we'd want it crossing up horizontal array we'll do it only once okay and we'll go create and you can put whatever message you want on there once that's done see a little little timer clock tells us tells us uh, it's it's been set but look at where price is going now back into no man's land so it's not ready okay it may well go up but right now it's not ready okay so GN again that's uh, that's that went as far as it wants to go so you see how it, the pivot was <coughs> support then we had a slightly more positive but the buyers started to take over and now for the for the price to come down the pivot is now resistance so price is now returning back to the north back to the upside so euro odd yeah started to come down didn't really get past this this 200 moving average euro nzd i'm going to go in a minute because we've been on for ages uh You can monitor it, but look at all the look at all this, what's in the way. Moving average, pivot, okay, trend line, areas of interest, tool moving average. There's just so much in the way. Uh, so yeah, nothing really happening now. And GN. Oh, excuse me. Right. Okay. Set your alerts. Um, Slightly, it's a lot more positive trading day uh, today than it has been of late. Uh, this is slightly more of the normal kind of trading routine that we would normally go in, um, and it's worth setting those alerts just to just to keep the keep the charts open uh, because obviously uh, it's seven sixteen, and you know some people don't even start to trade uh, until eight o'clock so you've got to bear that in mind as well so keep everything open and um, just wait and uh, and see what opportunities come your come come the way of the 6 a.m crossfire forex trading session right if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel hit the subscribe button really appreciate that if you've got any questions uh, I don't care how ridiculous you think your questions may or may not be there are no silly questions just things to learn from so drop me a drop me a comment below, um, and hit hit the like button if you got some benefit from this, um, and uh, we'll see you on the next session. There was something else I was going to say. I can't remember what it is right now. Right, we'll see you. We'll see you a bit later on if we're on for the 1 p.m. session doing the crossfire at 1 p.m. Bye for now.